Hello everyone, today we're going to be showing you guys how we can move skeletal meshes using other actors and have them animate smoothly just like this. So, hope you guys enjoy. So firstly, I already have a couple of folders here. I'm just going to go into this control rigs folder. You can just right click and create a new folder and just call it whatever. Um, but I already have a folder here for all my control rigs. So here, there's two ways to create a control rig. One is if you already have a skeletal mesh. Let's say for example in here, this this you can just right click on a skeletal mesh and then create a control rig like this uh, and that's going to set up your skeletal mesh and everything or i'm just going to create a new brand new control rig and show you guys how we can set that up manually so i'm going to go into animation control rig and create a new control rig now in this for this tutorial we're going to be rigging the default fn mannequin that already comes within the engine that way i don't have to import any other skeletal mesh so i'm just going to call this cr for control rig underscore mannequin like that and i'm gonna go in here and here we are inside of our control rig window so there's a couple of things in this editor here in this user interface firstly we have the viewport where we can view our model here uh, it's not imported yet so we're gonna import that in a second and in the middle here we have our main graph where just like materials and blueprints in unreal engine we use pins and notes to build our logic in here so this is where we're going to be constructing our logic here we have the details panel we don't have anything selected so that's fine compiler results it just tells us if we screwed up or if everything's a-okay and then finally we have the most important one this rig hierarchy here now if you don't see any of these windows uh here's a quick tip go up here to where it says window and in here it's going to give you a list of every single window that you can see in your user interface so if you don't see rig hierarchy just select on this it's going to create a new rig hierarchy here but i already have this here and speaking of which, this rig hierarchy is one of the most important tabs that you're going to have and you're going to be using in here because this is where you're going to look at all your bones and all your bone hierarchy. As you can see here, there's nothing imported yet. So what we need to do here is just simply click on the import hierarchy button here. That's going to give you this little window here where we can select our mesh. In our case, I'm going to be using this FN mannequin that's already built in within our Unreal Editor. Just like that and just like, okay. And you can see that now we can have our mesh here along with all the bones. So speaking of which, you can see these bones are arranged in a sort of parent child manner. And that's because control rig is hierarchy based. So this hierarchy just simply means that the bones that are going to be on top are going to drive the bones that are going to be parented to this bone. So for instance, this thigh bone, if we were to move this bone, it would move the entire calf, the leg and the foot because obviously all those are connected to the thigh bone. Now, at the top of the hierarchy, the biggest of the big, the bone that controls everything, the bone that everything is parented to, is this root bone. What this implies is if we move the root bone, every other bone in this hierarchy is going to move along with it. So what we want to do is to illustrate that we're going to actually try to move the root bone. But you can see here that if I try to move this um, using any sort of method here, we can't actually move the bones. That's because to move the bones, we use what's known as controls in control rig controls are simply little gizmos that help us visualize and move the bone itself so what we need to do is we need to create a new control here i'm just going to right click anywhere here in our in an empty space create new control like that now because we want this control to move this root bone we need to sort of name this after the bone we're moving uh, it's just convention here so in this case we're moving the root so i'm just going to type in root and then we suffix this with the underscore control now one important thing is that for some reason at the moment this uh this should show a little gizmo here a little shape which you can go here in the details panel and in the shape tab you can change the shape of the control but for some reason it's bugged at the moment or i just can't get it to show up so it's not going to show a shape at the moment but you can just change the shape properties here in the future if this decides to come back great so we have our control and you can see here that in this control we can actually move just like we can move anything within the the editor uh, but that's not actually moving anything at anything at the moment as you can see here so what we need to do first is we need to actually tell within this graph we need to tell the control rig that this root bone is going to be following this root control so to do that firstly we're going to get the root bone or the bone that you want to move and i'm just going to drag this out into the graph like this and you can see we get a couple of options here we have get bone set bone set rotation set translation and all that what we want to do here is we want to set the bone here and you can see that creates a new node here called set 
transform. So already we can see that this is going to set the transform of the, of the bone, meaning the position, rotation, and scale, the bone. And if we expand this item here, you can see that you can see that's already filled with the type bone and the type root because we just directly drag that in there. Now, what we need to do is we need to actually get a transform that we can, can plug into this value node here. And you probably guessed it, we can drag out this root control. And instead of setting the control, we want to obviously get the control transform because that's what we're going to be using to drive our little bone here. You can see that's already pre-made with the control and the root control. And we can see we have this transform output pin. So you can see here, these are both orange. So we should be able to just drag this in here and plug that in. Now, what this is saying is we're getting the transform of the control. And just setting that to be the transform of the bone because here if i move this it's still not going to work because we need to hook up this execution pin inside of here that way this instruct this set of instructions actually execute so once we plug that in you can see that now when i move my root control that's moving the root bone which in turn is obviously moving every other bone in the hierarchy here i can do the same procedure with any other bone so let's say we want to move the the thigh bone here and what i want to do is um instead of creating a new control here what i'm actually going to do is i'm going to create a new control at the same exact pos position that this thigh bone is located when we create a new control that's created at the origin zero zero but i want it to be created at the exact same position that the our bone is located in so to do that we just want to click on our bone and right click and create a new control and you can see that's going to create a new control at the same exact position that our thigh bone is located here now, by default, this is going to be parented to the thigh bone, which we don't want. Instead, we want to parent it to our own hierarchy, which in this case would be inside of the root bone, because in our skeletal mesh hierarchy here, the thigh is parented to the root. And obviously, it's parented to the pelvis, but the other sort of parent would be the root. And now we do the same thing here. So we want to control the thigh bone here. So as you probably guessed it, we want to drag this out here and we want to set the bone transform and uh, let's hook up the execution pins here, hook that up. And then obviously if we want to drive this using the control of the thigh control, well, we just grab this thigh and if we want to get the control. So we get the transform. Now, when we plug that in there, we can compile that. And now you can see, we can now move our thigh, uh, with this root. And I'm actually gonna, let's see, go into characters here and just select it only that way we don't see the entire skeleton here. But you can see that now I'm going to try this out. If I move this around here, you can see that now that's sort of working. And if I click on this and I rotate it, that's going to rotate my thigh so I can. OK, so that's how you would use controls to move your bones. Uh, now, at the moment, I'm just going to get rid of this because what we want to do is we want to move the entire mannequin using some other actor within our world. So for now, this is going to be fine. We're just going to be using this root control to move the entire mannequin. I'm just gonna combine that and I'm gonna go back into my thing. So we should be done with that. Now we have this root control. We just need to attach this root control to some other actor in our world. So that way, when we move that actor, that's gonna move the root control, which in turn is gonna move the root bone, which in turn is gonna move our entire mannequin. So we're done with that for the moment. This is gonna be our simple starting control rig graph here. So I'm just gonna save that and all is good. So I made this little blueprints folder and in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and create a new blueprints class, which is just going to be a building prop. So I'm going to call this BP underscore mannequin See that. Okay. So in here, obviously the first thing we need to add is our actual skeletal mesh model. So just go in here to add a new component and we want to add a new skeletal mesh. Now I'm going to call this SK underscore mannequin. In here, you can see we have animation looping, but more, most importantly, the actual mesh. I don't know why this isn't up here at the top, but whatever. Anyway, uh, for mesh, we want to select our FN mannequin. That's going to bring our mannequin into the blueprint. So I'm going to compile that. And now what we need is we need to attach a control rig to this blueprint in here. So we just want to add a new component and add a new control rig like this. And I'm just going to keep the name like this. Doesn't matter. And in here, you can see we have the control rig. So in here, we can select the control rig we've just created, which in this case is the CR underscore mannequin. And when I select that, you can see that visualizes the hierarchy we were using in our uh, mannequin here. It is, but you'll notice that when I compile this and I try to move the control rig around, 
this isn't actually moving our mannequin which is what we want and that's because we first need to tell this control rig component that we need we want to manipulate this sk underscore mannequin so the way we do that is using this user defined elements array in here so in here we can specify the elements that we've used in our control rig in this case the control and the bone itself and then attach that to the sk mannequin so that that drives our actual mannequin mesh so we're gonna add a new element here and if we expand this we have a few options here. The first thing is the component reference. So the thing we're actually moving is our root bone. So that's what we want to reference in here. So if you go back in here in the element name, the element we're going to be using is the root. You can see element type is already set to bone. You can select that to a bunch of stuff. So for the component name, uh, this refers to the component inside of your blueprint here. So either one of these things, this is the actual component that this belongs to. Now, obviously this root bone is going to belong to our skeletal mesh mannequin here. So I'm just going to, so instead of that, I'm going to do SK underscore mannequin or whatever the name of your mesh thing is here. And when we compile that, you can see that now when I move my control rig, that's moving along my, my root bone, the root bone corresponding to this, which is moving obviously every single thing. So next up, we want to map this root control element to some other actor. So this means we also want to add this into the user defined element right here. So I'm going to add a new element here and expand this. For the component name, we're going to leave this blank because we don't want to refer to any component inside of our blueprint. Rather, we want to refer to some sort of external actor. So that way this drives the, the entire mannequin. So firstly, for element type, we want to change this from bone to control because that's the element here. This root control is a control obviously the direction needs to be set to input like that and then i can call this root underscore control for the element name by that you see that sort of still moves around now if you had more than one sort of bone that you were setting here you would follow a similar thing here and add those in here add the bone and then add the control so on and so forth so i'm just going to compile that and save and now i can drag out my blueprint mannequin like this and you can see i can move them around nicely like that but I want to have, let's say, something like this sphere here control my mannequin. So the way we do that is we need to attach the root control to be owned by this sphere. Click on your blueprint here and then go into the details panel here. In here, you're going to notice we have this control rig component. Just click on that. That's going to expand a list of options here. Specifically, we want to look at this control element here. You can see that now we have a new option here called reference actor, which means that the actor that we select here is going to own this element, which in this case is going to be the root control. So if we select this, we pick an actor from our scene. You can see that now immediately our mannequin attaches to this actor because what we've done here is essentially we made the sphere be the owner of this root control. You can see that now that moves our mannequin, but I can drive my mannequin using this because of the control rig setup we've just done. So it's working nicely, but one problem that you might have is if you rescale this, if you scale this up, you can see that now because this root control is controlling the entire transform of our mannequin, the transform of this sphere is going to be the transform of this. And that includes the scale, the rotation, and all that cool stuff. So if you didn't want this to scale along with the sphere, what you would do is you want to go back into your control rig here. And instead of plugging in the entire transform node here, you can just expand this and just plug in the values you want. So I want rotation and I want translation, but scale, I'm not going to touch that. So if we compile that, you're going to notice that now this is going to break. And the reason is because you need to go back into your blueprint and compile that again. And now that's working nicely again. So you can see that if I scale this, it's not going to scale the mannequin itself. And But if I rotate it, it's still going to rotate it because we're feeding in the rotation value into this transform bone here. Now, another thing is that this still looks sort of instantaneous, which won't do us any favors when we're moving stuff around with verse. So what I'm going to do here is for the translation, I'm actually going to drag this and add a spring interpolation here. We have this little spring interpolation out here. We just want to get the result tab here and just plug it into translation. And what that does now, if, if I move my control here, you can see that, that adds sort of a springy like effect. I'm just going to compile that. And of course, this is going to break again because remember, we got to compile our blueprint again. And now when I move this, you can see it's doing the same exact thing, this little springy motion. Okay, so that works nicely in our viewport, but how would this look like when we actually control this sphere with inverse? So I've just prepared a quick little script here that just teleports our sphere uh, in a random direction here. Uh, and I, when I drag this out, you can see that I can reference it because this is just a static mesh that I've added here. So I'm just going to create a quick blueprint here. Let's call this VP underscore mover, add a sphere. 
like that compile that get rid of this and then drag in this sphere blueprint here now notice that now the reference sort of broke here we just need to go back into our control rig again and for the reference to actor just select our sphere again and you can see that that's working nicely again and in here we want to select our mover to be this i'm just gonna build verse code here okay guys so i'm in my game and when i start my game we're gonna see that even if we use teleport to you can see that that sort of has this little springy sort of like movement instead of just blindly teleporting there which is a lot smoother than just using teleport and no control rig but anyway that's pretty much it um, as always i hope this was helpful and yeah